What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today we continue moving forward through the DCEU, and we jump from World War I up to 1984 with Wonder Woman 1984, starring Gal Gadot. Chris Pine, Kristen Wiig, Pedro Pascal, Robin Wright, Connie Nielsen, and a very special appearance by Linda Carter. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And like I said during the introduction, today we're going to keep on going through the DCEU. Yesterday we kicked it off in World War I with Wonder Woman, and today... The next stop is the sequel to that film, which takes place in 1984, Wonder Woman 84. And as our movie opens, we flash back and a young Diana participates in an athletic competition on Themyscira against the older Amazons. After falling off her horse due to looking back at her opponents, Diana takes a shortcut, but ends up missing a checkpoint. Antiope removes her from the competition, explaining that anything worthwhile must be obtained honestly. We then jump ahead, and it's now 1984, and Diana works at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., while secretly performing heroic deeds as Wonder Woman. We then meet new museum employee, Barbara Ann Minerva, who's a shy geologist and cryptozoologist who is barely noticed by her co-workers and comes to envy Diana. Later, the FBI asked the museum to identify stolen antiquities from a robbery that Wonder Woman had recently foiled. Barbara and Diana notice one particular item later identified as the Dreamstone, which contains a Latin inscription claiming to grant the holder one wish. Barbara wishes to become like Diana and ends up acquiring the same superpowers, while Diana unknowingly wishes for her deceased lover, Steve Trevor, to be alive, resurrecting him in another man's body, and the two end up being reunited at a Smithsonian gala. We then meet failing businessman Maxwell Lorenzano, better known as Max Lord, who tricks Barbara and steals the Dreamstone, hoping to use its power to save his bankrupt oil company. Max Lord wishes to become the stone and gains its wish-granting powers, becoming a wealthy and powerful figure who creates chaos and destruction as his powers trigger worldwide instability. Barbara, Diana, and Steve discover that the Dreamstone was created by Dolos, the god of mischief also known as the Duke of Deception. It grants a user's wish while extracting a toll, unless they renounce the wish or destroy the stone. Although Diana's power and Barbara's humanity begin to diminish, both are unwilling to renounce their wishes. Learning from the U.S. president of a satellite system that broadcasts signals globally, Max, whose powers are causing his body to deteriorate, plans to globally grant wishes in order to steal the strength and life force from the viewers and regain his health. Diana and Steve confront him at the White House, but Barbara, who is now aligned with Max, betrays Diana and knocks her down, escaping with Max on Marine One. 
Steve is able to convince Diana to renounce her wish and let him go, restoring her strength and gaining an ability to fly. Diana dons the armor of Amazonian warrior Asteria and flies to the satellite headquarters and again does battle with Barbara, who has transformed into a humanoid cheetah after wishing to become an apex predator. Following a brutal flight, Diana tackles Barbara into a lake and electrocutes her and then pulls out. Diana confronts Max and uses her lasso of truth in order to communicate with the world through him, persuading everyone to renounce their wishes. She then shows Max visions of his own unhappy childhood and of his son, Alistair, who is frantically searching for his father amid the chaos. Max renounces his wish and reunites with Alistair, causing Barbara to return to normal. Sometime later in the winter of that year, Diana ends up meeting the man whose body Steve had possessed, and our movie ends with its post credit scene where Asteria is revealed to be alive and secretly living amongst the humans. And Asteria is our cameo by the lovely, talented, and original Wonder Woman herself, Linda Carter. I don't feel that this movie was as iconic as the original Wonder Woman. I feel like this was a sequel for sequel sake. I'm not saying it wasn't good, and I'm not going to take anything away from it. But it just doesn't have the rewatchability factor for me as the original does. I still feel it was a solid story. I feel like it flowed well. There wasn't filler. All those things that I touched on yesterday that I've been talking about a lot lately here this month when it comes to the DC films. On that front, it was fine. I just don't feel like this film, at the end of the day, was really needed. We very easily could have just gone from Wonder Woman to her appearance in Dawn of Justice. At least that's what I think. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Of course, if you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, Leave your thoughts and comments down here. When it comes to my rating for this film, I, I gave the original Wonder Woman five stars. This one I think I'm going to give three and a half out of five. Again, it was good. It did keep my interest. I just don't see me rewatching this as much as I rewatched the original. Again, I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know. If you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over there. If you're watching on demand, leave your thoughts and comments down there. Whatever you do, though, when we get out there on social media, let's try to get those hashtags trending. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And, of course, the ever popular hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. 
Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Make sure you guys tune in tomorrow, right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews that'll be replayed an hour later on the Jeff Meacham Network when I will be joined by the West Coast professor himself as me and him discuss Man of Steel, starring Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, Michael Shannon, Kevin Costner, Diane Lane, Lawrence Fishburne, and Russell Crowe. You're not going to want to miss out tomorrow. Right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel. Right back here on an all-new Renegades Reviews when me and Jeff Meacham discuss Man of Steel. To all my loyal fans out there, tuning in watching the premiere, leaving your thoughts and comments over here. Thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Likewise, all my loyal fans and viewers out there tuning in a little bit later in the day, watching on demand, leaving your thoughts and comments down here. Thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate all my loyal fans and viewers out there that tune in on a regular basis. Show me that love. Show me that support. Trying to get my views up trying to help me eventually get monetized. Thank you very much for tuning in and joining me, and I will see you guys next time.